In this demonstration, we're going to manage the full development lifecycle of an Apex application with Visual Builder Studio. We start by looking at our Apex application running on our QA environment. We can see it's a very basic application with just a button that says new record. And as Jeff, who is one of our team members, we know that this is the wrong title for this button. Since we know it's a wrong title, we can go into Visual Builder Studio and use the issue tracking system to report a new issue in our application. I'm going to create a new issue, provide a summary. In our case, we're going to say that the title for the button is wrong, and we're going to provide a description that describes the right title for this button. The issue tracking system allows you to fill out a lot of information about each issue. For example, what type of this issue is? Is it a bug? Is it a new feature or a task? We can also set a priority, for example, set a high priority. We can choose which part of the product this is in and assign it to different people. Those lists are customizable, by the way. We can indicate when this issue is due to be delivered and we can estimate how long it's going to take or provide estimate in agile points, which is what we're doing here. So we just created defect one to five in our system, and this is going to be in our list of issues. For example, in the query that shows us open issues. To manage our development cycle, we're using agile methodology and agile dashboards. So we're switching now to look at it from the perspective of Shai, who's managing our project. And he can see here in our activity stream that the new issue has been created. He can go into our Agile dashboard to look at the status of our current development sprint. And he can look at our backlog and take the new issue from our backlog and bring it into our current development sprint. If we now look at the active sprint, we'll see the new issue assigned to Shai over here. This is in the to-do stages. If Shai is going to work on it, he can move it, for example, to be in the in-progress column, simply by dragging and dropping. So now let's go over and modify the code. To modify the code, we're going to go into our Apex development environment. This is the page that is running in my development instance on the Shy DB. Let's go to the button and change the title to fix it based on the issue that was reported. So now the title is going to say get started and we're going to save the changes. Those changes are saved into the development database that Shai is using. Now we're going to go back into Visual Builder Studio and use a build job to take those changes and load them into a Git repository in Visual Builder Studio. We're going to run the job and provide two parameters. The first one is a name for a branch, and the second one is the commit message for the changes we made. In this case, we're creating a new branch, branch one to five, and providing a commit message over here. Let's look at the configuration of this job while it's running. So this job connects to our Git repository, and then it uses two parameters, the branch and the comment. And in the steps, we're going to check out the code and create a new branch with the name that we specified. Then we're going to connect using SQL CL to our development database and use Liquibase to generate a description of our application with all the artifacts. Then we're going to add those to our branch, create a commit message with our comment and push this as a new branch into our Git repository. So this job finished successfully, and indeed if we'll go to our Git repository, we would now see branch one to five that we just created with the changes that we applied. Now our target is to bring those changes into the main line of code. But to do that, we're going to go through a merge request process. Over here, we're going to hook up to our Git repository and target the main branch with the changes we did in branch one to five. You can see that the commit is automatically associated with the merge request. We can add multiple reviewers to review our code changes. We can let them know which issue we are solving with this change. And we can give them even further comments on things that we changed in our code. 
This would allow our team members to review the code changes we did, let us know if they see any issues, and then we can fix those. So we created this merge request. Let's switch over again to the view of Jeff, who is one of the reviewers for the code changes. So he's going to go into his view of the merge request. He can see the request over here. If he wants to know what changes we did, he can click on changed files and see the exact lines that we changed in the code from Apex. For example, here he can see the change in the title. He can give us comments on specific lines of code. In this case, he is okay with the changes that we did. And then he can click approve to indicate that he's okay with the code changes. Let's switch back into Shai's view and do a reload here. Shai is going to see all the communication from the team members about his code. For example, if we scroll down here, we can see the comment from Jeff on this specific line of code. If everyone is happy with the code changes, Shai can also approve those changes and then click the merge button to take the changes and merge them into our main line of code. Now, if we'll go back into the main line of code, we can see the changes and the last commit has been applied to our main branch. In parallel, this kicked off a new build process. The build is starting with a export step and then doing a deploy step. Those steps are part of a pipeline that we're executing automatically. So let's look at each one of those jobs. The export job that finished successfully is hooked up to our main branch of the Git repository and is automatically going to be executed when something changed there. Over here, we're connecting to our development database and creating a controller file and exporting our application in uh, Liquibase using SQL CL and Liquibase integration. After those files have been exported, we're going to archive them as part of the artifacts that we generate from this build. And indeed, you can see the controller file and the F103 XML file over here. The next step that we're going to do is a deployment step, which is running right now. So let's look at the configuration of the deploy step. The deploy step connects to our Git repository to pick up the database connection and then copies the artifacts from the previous job, the package job, changes the controller file to invoke the 103 XML file, and then again connects with SQL CL to another database, that's our QA database, and uses two Liquibase commands, one to show us the status and the other one to do an update of our application in this new database instance. So we can see that the deployment step also finished. We can look at the log. At the end of the log, we can see that the status indeed uh, showed us one change set that hasn't been applied yet. The uh, update would then take it and update this into our database. So now that this has been updated, let's go back into our QA database that showed us the new record and let's do a reload of the application. And again, this is our QA database called Apex. We need to re-log in into our application. And we can see the change has been applied to our QA instance. So using Visual Builder Studio, we can now track the full development process that we did in our activity stream. It all started with us recognizing a new issue and reporting it in our issue tracking system and assigning it to one of our developers. The developer did the code changes and checked them into a branch in our Git repository. We went through a code review to figure out if the changes are appropriate, then approved it to be merged into main, which then fired up a build job and a pipeline that took our application and exported it from one instance and imported it into another Apex instance. If we now look at our Agile board, we can see that the issue has been resolved and we're ready to tackle our next issue in our development lifecycle.